Okay, so uh, let's get going here. We're a little bit uh, later than I wanted to get going, but that's fine. So, um, okay, so, so let's talk about uh, what we just did. So um, now there's no, there's no perfect placement of, um, of GCPs, right? And in some cases, we're doing this on a sandy plain, a grass lawn, you know, something like that where there's, it's just like, whatever, I guess I'll toss it here, right? Um, but where we do have the option to, to where there's some kind of visual distinction, I would, again, it's not required, but I think it's just generally best practice to pick that. So in this case, these guys threw this um, one down when they were mapping Sierra Hall, they, they put this guy on a corner, which is, a, I think, a good thing to do. So the edge of something, uh, you know, especially if something makes a cross or a, or a 90 degree angle, that's really great. Because then if something were to happen, if the wind were to blow this away or some kid were to come and kick it, we probably could still recover where that position would be, right? Um, uh, and then in contrast, in contrast... In contrast, this one, right? Again, is this bad? It's not bad, but it's probably better to not have this like this, right? So maybe better to put this, maybe move it so that it's on the bumpy or on the corner of the bumpy uh, uh, ADA ramp thing, or maybe up here at the at the sliced concrete somewhere. Again, so if there is an issue, we have a backup visual thing. Um, the other reason that that will help is when you're looking for where your ground control point is when you're using your, your, your program to go in and find it, it's nicer to have like a larger, you know, a larger visual target. So if we have a line or a cross feature or something like that, it's easier to see from farther away um, uh, and, just, and just, you know, helps. So again, not bad, but better to have this in a place that is, uh, if we have the option of visual distinctiveness, we have that. Okay, first thing. Second thing, let's have a look at, let's have a look. So here are, here are your um, GCP points that you guys have all uh, uh, made in the course of your uh, mapping um, this morning to, to mark stuff. And so uh, you, can, you should have all been able to see this on your map. And so again, um, just for full disclosure, not only would I have dropped my points, but before I left for the day or before I pulled up my, my um, targets, I would go back and confirm and make sure, yep, I got all these. Every once in a while something happens. Uh, we had um, uh, Tony's group for whatever reason, I don't know, the app wasn't letting them take photographs for a while. I don't know why. We restarted it, it said it was a firmware thing or we restarted a firmware, and I, I don't know. Did, we just, finally Zach plugged his phone in, it worked. So sometimes, sometimes stuff just doesn't work right, right? Sometimes there's, there's just gremlins and all this electronic stuff, right? And so, so you want to just double check and make sure, yeah, it really did get logged. It really did get recorded. Um, again, the field map tool that you have, once you have that, and the same goes for, uh, you know, Survey123 or any of these, these suite of ARC tools. Once you have that, that, um, pro, that app on your phone and once you have that data layer or that form or whatever it is on your phone, you don't need to be online. So you could be out in the middle of uh, Pacific Island somewhere or whatever. Um, there would just be a routine that when you collected it, it would say, you know, upload later or, or, or you know, uh, data save but not upload or there's, there's some routine like that and that's fine. And then whenever you get back to Wi-Fi, you can just upload the whole package. So once you have it set up and you, and you know it works, you're good to go as long as you didn't delete the app or something. Um, okay. Uh, so if we look at this here, if we pick a point, let's just pick this point here. Um, and we open it up, what we'll, we'll see is we'll see um, some stuff that uh, are default um, uh, fields that we don't necessarily need. So speed is how fast we're moving when we collected that point, right? We're, we're, not, we're not doing that kind of stuff. Um, but what we'll see is, uh, again, we don't need to go into um, the specifics for this class, but if you guys take um, ArcGIS or our more intermediate stuff, um, we have some measure of accuracy here. So we have some HDOP, PDOP, these different um, differentials that give us some estimate. They're not perfect. They're not always 100% correct, but they give us some vague idea as to how close we are. Did, was anybody not able to collect a point today? I was, we, oh, we were able to, but it just said like not accurate. Right, right, 
Right. So, so I have it set. I have it currently set to it's either 15 or 20 feet, plus or minus 15 or 20 feet. So your default phone will be plus or minus about 30 feet. And so you can get more accurate, but you can't just like flick it on. You have to sort of leave it there for a little bit. So if you notice that if it wasn't letting you collect, it's because I, I wanted it to be a little more accurate than just generic. You can set it for even higher resolution. So if we were doing, let's say we had a ground, we had a, um, a total station or another one of these uh, tools to help us have even finer scale resolution, the X, Y, and Z, maybe we'd want to set it for uh, no worse than a meter let's say, or whatever it is. And then again, what would happen is if we were to try to save that the way I have this data collection routine set up, it would say, oh, not accurate enough. You got to wait. And so usually what that would mean is usually that would mean leaving the, the sensor in place longer because it needs to sort of talk to more satellites or get more um, uh, a signal. Or in some cases, just a bad spot. Maybe there's trees around us or we're in a ravine and it just uh, it can only get to a certain level of accuracy, in which case um, I would probably move the ground control point to another location. So that the reason I have it set that way is so that you don't just grab some random random point that you have at least. So again, this isn't like super precise, but it, it's not just the random turn it on and get a 10 second grab of the of the thing. So, OK. Um, OK. Uh, and then it has some stuff here. It has is, you know, elevation and all this kind of stuff. And then it has our photo, right? So now we can go back in here and if we forget or if we do this in three days from now, we're like, wait, which one was which and, and, and what have you? Oh, okay, it's, the, it's this target that looks like uh, this, right? Okay, and so, so that's our field map. So uh, uh, the things you guys are gonna do is, you know, you're gonna, you have, if you haven't already, you have downloaded your photos and you are going to um, uh, make sure that you have a good shot or the best shot of your of your target for each GCP, and then I want you to change the name of the photo. So if it's DJI 000 2324 or something like that, just add a dash GCP one or GCP two or, G, or whatever you called it, right? So that you can find it because because eventually when we get to doing a run where we're trying to tighten the the map, you, you need to pull, pull that photo up and then sort of point to where your your target is, and so. So it's just when you have several photos, it can be a pain in the butt. So you just want to, it's nicer to, to know where it is. Okay. Um, and then, so once, and then I've done that. And then I want to go and check and make sure I have my, but that my uh, GCP points are in the map or I, I have the Latin lawn and, and stuff in there. Okay, cool. Uh, where do I want to go next? No. Okay, uh, so next I want to show you guys, uh, I, I want you to, to start to play a little bit with this. Now I had an issue, I had a bunch of things rendered last night and the internet gods decided that they didn't want me to be productive. So um, they I basically can't, all the links I was about to share with you don't work, but that's fine. But we have this one. So let's take a look. So this is, now these will all be a little bit different. This particular product is from Open Drone Map, um, but, uh, let me click off this guy. Okay, so um, here is our our building, uh, and this is from this is not your stuff. This is some stuff that Zach shot, and this was this is with. Um, uh, so uh, you guys tell me how many photos did you guys take? How many photos did you guys take, roughly? Austin. Fifty-five. Or, 55? Okay, uh, Jonathan, how many how many did your group take? Forty-four. Okay, cool. So, how many did you guys take approximately? Eighty-two. Okay, cool. Kieran, how many did you guys approximately? Forty-one. Forty-two. Thirteen. Okay. Okay, cool. So, again, this will work with any number of photos, right? Um, but the uh, the more we get, the more you know, the more overlap, the more accuracy, all that kind of good stuff. Um, but as we talked about, there's always a trade-off. Okay, so this. This particular one was rendered with about 200-ish. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but but 200-ish photos. Um, and so what we can see here, and you guys, and so don't don't click it quite yet if you guys 
I already have the link, but just have a look up here first. Okay, so um, uh, I can do various things with this. So I can say, so this is obviously Sierra Hall. First, let me screw a little bit in. Okay, so there's Sierra Hall. So I can, uh, I can click this guy, and it'll tell me in space where it thinks all of the images were taken from, right? So each of these blue planes is the location of, in this case, the drone. If it was a, a hand camera, it would be where the camera was. And then essentially the, ori the plane is the orientation that the, that the uh, camera was pointed in, okay? So that just gives you a sense of what the coverage was like. Um, so if we look at this, right, if I just, I, I, this, I've sent you guys just the 3D model link, but if I kind of scroll in, you, right, we can see all these little, um, little teeny tiny points. And so that's, that again is the point cloud, which each point has been colored with the centroid of the photo that it was used to construct that with. But I can then, I can then click this dude. We'll think for a second. Or maybe more than a second. And then it'll essentially, uh, overlay the photos and, and make it more realistic whenever it thinks for a second. That seems to be taking a long time. Okay, so there we go. So now, now it looks actually like a building, right? Now, now we actually see stuff. And if we were to zoom in, we could see, we could see uh, you know, nice features of these different um, parts of the building, et cetera, okay? Um, I can, there's all kinds of stuff I can mess with. I can change perspective and all this and that. Um, and the background, I can, let me see. So the background, I could have be whatever. I could have it be pure black. I could have it be white. I could be, there could be none. Uh, you know, so that, that's just sort of aesthetics there. None of this is changing the actual data. Um, and I could have it be high quality. Um, which is just how, how much resolution we want. And that's really just an issue of how quickly is our internet connection. And how, again, it's not changing anything about the actual model. It's just how it's being displayed to us in the, in the browser. Um, okay, but then the thing I wanted to draw your attention to is now we can start doing actual things here, right? Um, so we can start measuring things, okay? So if I... If I go to this guy, oh, actually, okay, so, so first, as I think we talked about last week a little bit, so, so it looks really good straight down, yeah? Like, it lo looks pretty good. This looks like, I see my smokestacks, I see my tile, I see the, see the corridor and all that kind of stuff, but as I start to look on the side, um, that's where I'm starting to see these holes in the building, right? So we don't have any data here, or either we don't have data, or the data is, is, uh, uh, the, the program was incapable of coming to a decision on how to render it, right? So there might have been a photograph that had a picture of this side of the building or two or three or whatever, but there wasn't enough overlap so it could actually extrapolate what the state space, what the, what the point cloud would be. And so therefore, it's only stretching the photos over where there's robust point cloud. So if we were to go through our photos, so if we were to do like a crime scene investigation, right? And we're like, oh my God, is there a blood spatter there? We could go through our photos and probably see if there was, you know, red on this side of the building, but it's just not rendering in our three-dimensional state space. Okay? All right. So then once I have it here, I, I have access to all these different tools. And while, again, we could also just bring this into ArcGIS and, and use our suite of geospatial analysis tools, uh, digital surface model tools and things of that nature, but, but um, suffice it to say, I can uh, pick any of these guys, right? And I can say, uh, hey, how far is this point, uh, the roof line? Okay, this dude, or here, sorry. Okay, so, so how far is, how long is this dude? And it's, so the, the length of that um, row of tiles is about 37 and a half meters, right? And I can change this to be feed or whatever I want. And if you look, but, but so have a look. So since we're all going to be sharing this, since I wasn't able to render all the different ones, right? I could do all these measurements. Uh, if you were to log on right now, you would see all of my measurements. So when I'm done with this, 
I'm going to come over here, I'm going to click this clear, and then I'll just leave it, leave it clear. So that if, I, if I'm playing with this, I'm not going to leave my, my um, measurement notes all over everything for the next person. Um, okay, but you can have a look, and it's going it, to, there's like, you know, point, there's elevation, there's all kinds of tools you can use to measure uh, volume and stuff like that, etc. cetera. Um, and then, okay, so this, so this option I'm on is on the 2D version, or excuse me, the three-dimensional version. I can then click this guy, and it's gonna give me the two-dimensional version. Again, sometimes all we want, all we need is the two-dimensional version. That'll render a lot more quickly and you know, not as much. So I, I set this processing to do the default, which is normally what we would do. So do whatever we can do. But if we knew we definitely didn't want to do anything with the 3D, I could have picked to just have that two-dimensional plot. And again, the, in the different, in Drone Deploy and in Pix4D, everybody has a slightly different uh, way of doing this. But basically, if you don't need all that three-dimensional stuff, it'll, it'll go a bit faster, right? It's still gonna create a three-dimensional state space in the process of doing stuff, but it'll, it doesn't worry about the accuracy of the, of the um, Z, essentially. So it, it'll go faster. Um, okay, so in this case, I've just clicked on the 2D, so we're just looking at the downward. And here, I think, is a good example, if I go in here, a good example of why, of the value of this kind of stuff, right? So if I, if the slider down here is the opacity, so if I take it down, this is what essentially the, the Google Earth, the free, the free um, uh, satellite imaging quality is, right? And so that's cool, but now we can fly and actually see what's going on today. What happened with that landslide? What happened with that, um, that wildfire or whatever? Um, so cool. So again, I still have a suite of tools or just not quite as many tools because it's a two dimensional thing with that. So that's what we're sort of building towards, right? Uh, so that you guys can play with this and, and look at your own uh, building that you mapped. Cool, makes sense so far? Okay, so the first step for, for today is to um, take your images. Let's not, let's not initially worry about our ground control points. Let's just render our first stab at the building, that, our individual building that we've been uh, mapping today. So uh, that, that you're, gonna, you're gonna wanna have all of your photos in a uh, folder. And then you can, you can go to uh, Open Drone Map, and if you're gonna process them on your computer, you can do it that way. If you're gonna do it through uh, the web interface, you're just gonna go, you're gonna create a new file, or a new, excuse me, new project, they call it a pro new project, and then select those photos, and um, it'll say select photos and GCPs. We're not gonna worry about GCPs this first phase. We're just gonna select photos, and uh, we're gonna uh, upload them, and then it'll, it'll take a little bit to upload, and then it'll say, okay, process, or you say continue or process, whatever the button is, and then just hit that. And as we saw last week, that might take some time depending on how our computer's configured, but that's our next step. Ready, steady, go.